So officially, welcome everyone to the reveal of the virtual. It's a reveal for us too. It's a we reveal. don't know. It is. It is a reveal, and we've got to do the hand as well every time we reveal something. <laughs> um, so today we have our lovely our contest announcement for folks who participated in the Virtuoso in Waiting contest to win a free seat to my social PR Virtuoso Master Course. We will get to that. And because I knew it was going to be um, a really hard decision, I invited a panel of judges to participate in the judging with me because there's just no way that I could have picked them, picked a winner. Yeah, it was so hard. So our judges are really good and it was hard, really, yeah, was really good hard. entries. I kept changing. I was yeah. like, ooh, that's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> So for anyone who is new to me, though hopefully you're not if you're joining this club, but just in case you are, I'm Shanali Burke, our uh, president and CEO of Shanali Burke Consulting, which is, you know, one of the most creative company names on the planet. Completely creative. <laughs> totally creative. It'd be funny um, if you weren't the president and CEO. I know, right? <laughs> um, and I'm also the founder of the Social PR Virtuoso, which is an online training hub for a badass social PR professionals <laughs> who want to unleash their inner social PR superhero. And Simona Combi is one of them. And Simona, introduce yourself to everyone and tell them how we got to know each other. Hi, um, so my name is Simona Combi. Um, I um, work for a small nonprofit called the Center for Global Policy Solutions, where I do media relations and social media. And I got to meet Shanali at a PRSA seminar in New York three years ago, I think, just about, yeah. Um, and I left with a long list of things to do <laughs> uh, and materials to go through. Um, and so we, then we stayed in touch via uh, Twitter and then LinkedIn. Um, and then all of a sudden she announced this awesome um, course, the first one that was free. Uh, and then, ta-da, at the end, <laughs> if you want to learn more, uh, here's the master course. Uh, so I jumped in and um, I think now I have uh, my work cut out for me for like the next year at least. <laughs> so I went through it then and back in January when it started um, and now I realize that there is a lot I still need to, um, a lot of worksheets that I still need to go through and do and so I'm in the, I'm still very much in the learning phase. We're <laughs> all still in the learning phase. I love it. Oh, we're all in the learning yeah. phase. What I love, but that's the thing, you have lifetime access. So, you know, you can do it when you're 75 if you want. Sometimes I wish there was a deadline to force me to do things. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking of doing, I'll, there's stuff coming, so there will be deadlines to meet. So that's tuned. great. That's great. <laughs> Jeannie, you don't need an introduction, but since we are introducing ourselves. I don't. Okay. Oh. Yes, oh, you I do. do get to introduce myself. Um, I'm Jenny Dietrich. I am here to, as the one person who does not have a glorious accent, so I sound like a cowboy compared to the two of you. <clears throat> um, maybe I should start talking and some twang. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Doesn't work for you, Shadali. Stop doing that. I love it when I say y'all. No, that's not true. <laughs> But you are, and I'm just here to hang out with you guys on a Friday I know. afternoon. Because it's and you're, and you're, but you're back in Chicago, which is awesome. I am until Monday, and then I'm going to Cincinnati. Cincinnati, ooh, fun. Well, you are the queen of the internet in many, many ways, and you, <laughs> you really are. You've, uh, you have. If for anybody who doesn't know you, which I highly doubt, but in case they don't, you have an amazing blog called Spin Sucks. You're author of I don't know how many books and you know your own courses and you know speaking in Oklahoma and Cincinnati and all over the place. And... <laughs> really glorious places. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to, so thank you so much. I know you're both super busy, so I really appreciate you taking the time to come here today. And even though she's not on the call today, I want to give a shout out to Janet Fouts, who is on the chat at J Fouts. And Janet is just one of the most brilliant, kindest, most loving people in the world, who herself is a social media trailblazer, blah, blah, trailblazer and legend. And uh, she is, is on restricted. Um, she's on, I'm trying to find a nice way to She's not allowed to talk. 
she has duct tape over her mouth right now. So <laughs> that has been put there voluntarily. There's no Hannibal Lecter involved. Um, so right. she was the fourth member of our judging panel. And even though she can't talk, uh, she's on our chat. So thank you all very, very much for doing this. Um, Let's talk a little bit about social PR before we do the big reveal, because, you know, once we've done this reveal, what do we have to talk about? <laughs> so, Ginny, you have, when did you start blogging? 2006. Jeez, wow, that's like 10 years ago. What was it? it is, in fact, it is 10 yeah. years ago. <laughs> that's yeah. the same year Avinash Koshik started years. blogging. That's, that's the what? same year Avinash Koshik started blogging. Well, you know, he's a bigger deal than I am. <laughs> What? That's just not possible. That's yeah, it's true. <laughs> Google, but it's Jenny. but it's it's um. And I remember back in two thousand six. That was I was still at Ruderfin before I had joined the ASPCA, and I had an intern who is now a senior exec at at a big agency, um, and he was a super smart guy. And he came in one day and said, you know, I want to do a lunch and learn on this thing called blogging, for the agency. Wow. The intern yeah, did that. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, I kind of sort of knew, but you know, back then we were not encouraged to seek out blogs. In fact, I will no. tell you for one client, um, the National Portrait Gallery, I think that I think that might have been 2006. So I, I was at 2005 or 2006. We actually created an integrated campaign to launch this um, portrait competition that they had never done before. And we incorporated a blog and, you know, paid outreach as well to paid ads and stuff to online outlets and and bloggers in the art space, which was like completely unheard of at the time. And I thought yeah. it was really, yeah. really amazing that part of the government was willing to do that essentially. But what has it been like for you to have been to have walked this journey um, over 10 years? You must have seen, I mean, like it's crazy, right? Well, you know, I I published the very first blog post every year on our anniversary, just so that people can see that we had no freaking clue what we were doing. It was horrible, horrible. I read that and I use it in presentations too. So I let people see. And so when I put it up on screen, I look at it and I think, what, like, what was going on in my brain? Because it doesn't even look like it was connecting at all because there's, there's like, some random quote from some random guy that has nothing to do with the blog post. And then there's, there's no um, attribution. There's no links. There's no SEO. There's no image. There's no, it's just a block of copy. It was for, it's horrible. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. So yeah, we've come a long way. <laughs> um, Simona, what about you? Do you have, if in, in the course of your work, are you able to incorporate social PR at all? I couldn't hear you very well because it just keeps oh. dragging on. Huh? Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Okay, I feel like the Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? Hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I was just asking. Um, do you get a chance to incorporate social PR into your work, and or how has your work changed over the last several years with social taking on such a huge role? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So definitely, social PR is part of everything I do, and whenever I think of a plan for how do we disseminate a publication or how do we. Um, you know, get more people to attend a webinar, live tweeting and tweeting with like-minded organizations is always part of the package. Um, so I've, and as I said, I manage the Facebook and Twitter um, accounts for my organization. Uh, and I love being able to do that. Um, that's one hat I love to have on my head. Um, and I've grown the community. So we have more followers on Twitter. We have more followers on Facebook. Um, so one thing that I need to work more on is creating the community that you were just talking about in your <laughs> latest blog <laughs> that I just saw on Twitter today. It's like, yes, that's, that's I think, the missing part um, So in, in what I'm trying to do. So the, I always think, oh, but it takes so much time. And so that's the thing that I need to find a way around somehow. So, yeah. Uh, side note, I was getting the, uh, the Spinsluck's blog posts for next week ready because I always do a, one last review beforehand. And there was a blog post running, I think it's Monday, um, by a guest blogger that has seven Chrome extensions that social media managers wow. should use. 
And there are at least two in there that I was like, oh my god! I am ready to write this down. What what are those? It's 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 seven Chrome extensions. I think it's running Monday afternoon. So sorry, Shanali, to to take over, Mm -hmm. but it I read it was a guest blog post that I read, and I was like, this is amazing. Hopefully, it makes you like better. But Ginny, you have really built a community. So kind of piggybacking off of what Simona said, um, you've really built an incredibly engaged community around Spin Sucks and around the work that you do. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, oh, I'm just the, the Spins are crazy, yeah. Uh, so any tips, quick tips on, on how to do that? Um, yes. The I, What's interesting to me is, you know, there's been all this experimentation on, should we let our, our community go to Facebook? Should we let our community go to Google Plus? You know, people aren't commenting on blogs anymore. And we certainly have seen a decrease in the number of comments, but the community, we, we, we let people comment where they comment. And I think you experience this too, like if you post something on your personal page and everybody goes to the blog and reads it and then goes back to your personal Facebook page and you're like, why didn't you just leave the comment on the blog? And so you have, you know, 60 comments on your Facebook page where you're just like, oh, people. Um, so I think that's part of it is we've just let people comment where it's comfortable for them. And also I've always had the belief that they want to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And so instead of just letting them leave a comment and nobody responding, I personally, and still do to this day, have conversations with them. And I think that's been a big difference in that most people just sort of let people leave comments and that's that. Yeah, yeah, I think that is a huge, and that's something Avinash said as well in his blog post. And of course, you know, for anyone on the chat stream who doesn't know Avinash Kaushik, if you're into measurement, which you really should be if you work in PR, because we have to be able to measure and prove our value and all of that. Uh, right. And he just has one of the most amazing blogs on the planet. And his posts are like thousands of words, thousands. And he's incredibly intelligent. So it's one of those things where you have to like, and, I mean, it's, it's like going down a rabbit hole. And it really is. He just, <laughs> uh, but he said yeah. the same thing that he, you know, now I don't know that he's able to go in and comment every day necessarily. Um, but he said the same thing about replying to each person. Um, and Janet says something in the, in the comments that you can't control the crowd. And I think that's really, really true. You really can't. No, you can't. And really, I mean, it's, there's some places that are more comfortable for people. So if you can meet them where they are, then I think that's there's a real mm-hmm. value. Yeah. So speaking of meeting people where they are or where they're not, I have one word for you, trunk. <laughs> uh, I like somebody tweeted, I kept it open. Trunk trunk is how law and order starts, right? <laughs> <laughs> trunk trunk. It makes me feel like I am Groot. I am trunk. Whoever came okay, up with that uh, name for them. Trunk. Appa- apparently, I'm still. But if- apparently, it's. Can you can you can you guys see me? Okay, Ginny and yeah. Simona. Okay, we can. Janet, yeah. I. Th- okay, so I'm gonna keep going um, because the recording will be fine. I think um, because if I. They said it's an abbreviation of Tribune Online Content, so Trunk. Yeah, Tribune Online Content. And like, of course, the internet is having a field day with it, including other media outlets. Oh yeah, everybody's like, what were you guys thinking? Because they did not even get their Twitter name. (laughs) (laughs) I guess it's easier to laugh about how stupid Trunk sounds than cry about how the industry is dying. And oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it just, it just is ironic to me. And then I have to read this out to you. There's this quote from the press release and I have to read this out. Our transformation strategy is focused on leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve the user experience and better monetize our world-class content, said Chairman Michael Farrow in a statement. Our rebranding to Trunk represents the manner in which we will pool our technology and content resources to execute on our strategy. A lot of marketing buzzwords in two sentences. And this is the same thing the journalists exactly. keep saying. Exactly, I was going to say, it's over. amazing to see this coming out of a um, company that has a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
and and several media properties. Right. So yeah. this is not social PR, just in case anybody is wondering, which is why we brought it up. You have to do your research and you have to make it community friendly, which is not happening here. I mean, they'll probably be fine. You know, people will get over it, but it's just, it makes for good fodder on a Friday afternoon. Cherry just said trunk equals transmitting BS so you don't have to. <laughs> Okay, all right, so now that we've established part of what is social PR and what doesn't really help with social PR, we are going to get to the meat and potatoes of this call. Let's to announce the winner of the virtual swing waiting contest. So just, uh, for everybody who um, is still getting up to speed on this, um, I reopened registration for my master course a couple of weeks ago. It went really well. And as part of that, I offered a complimentary seat to the course, which is valued at $499. But to be eligible to win, you had to submit an entry in our social PR posse group. Um, Janet, can you just drop the link to the posse group in the chat, please? As anyone who's, who is interested in social PR is welcome to join. Um, and you had to post an entry as to why you should win the virtual swim waiting contest with the hashtag. So there were some really great entries. Really great. And as I said, at the start of the call, there was no way I could have just picked one. So I knew I needed some real badasses to do this with me. So I asked Janet, Ginny, and Simona as one of the early virtuosos to each pick their winners as well. So Simona, let's start with you. Talk about a couple of the entries that stood out to you and why. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Because I lost you for a little sec for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Can, yes. can you hear me now? Okay, I was gonna say, can you talk a little bit about a couple of the entries that stood out to sure. you and why? Um, let me go to the Dropbox folder and open up the spreadsheet see what I said. <laughs> um, <laughs> see what okay, said. what did I say? So um, I liked Haley Burrell's um, point that she aspires to be a thought leader, um, which, which is very, I think for some of us, and I'm, I include myself in that uh, group, it, it's hard to have that kind of aspiration when you know how much more ground you have to cover and how much more you have to master. Um, so I really admire the ambition. Uh, I thought it was great. Um, and then um, there was a comment from Robin Rudish Lanning that, or Laning, um, that she she was talking about moving from being reactive to being strategic and this is something that uh, we cannot do enough of and it's always very easy to be reactive and then you get frustrated <laughs> because all you do is just keep passing the ball back or sending it where it has to go but you don't think about where all those balls go what what do they actually end up accomplishing so that's something that I is a constant struggle um, and I know it is for me. <laughs> so I, I don't know, I'm not speaking for yeah. everybody, but I really like that, uh, that she mentioned that. Um, then I, um, really liked, um, who else? I really liked, uh, Andrea Summers Huggins's comment that she, uh, about how she, uh, is thinking about pr proving value to stakeholders. Um, because as we know in NPR, it's always, uh, not that it's difficult, but that's a question that comes up more uh, than in other professions. So um, being able to prove that value is very, very important. Um, I mean, we sometimes don't think about proving it because it's very obvious to us, but <laughs> we need to keep in mind that it's not always obvious to the others. Um, yes. And, um, I really like Danielle's, uh, Danielle Ziage. Um, I like her entry because she wrote uh, such an enthusiastic um, response and made her case for her in, in a very enthusiastic way in a, during a very rough time. And I know I would never be able to do that. <laughs> I would be completely crushed and go curl up in a corner with a bottle of wine. <laughs> Since wine was mentioned, in the <laughs> which he may have done in, as well, but I'm sorry. 
she may have done that as but, well, right. but she still gave a very enthusiastic Right, response. and I was, I was blown away by that. <laughs> um, so that's highly commendable. And cool, um, cool. yes, so that's, that's about it for me. Cool, well, thank you. Uh, Ginny, what about you? I also loved Danielle because same for the same reason, I thought that she she sort of laid her soul on the line and uh, it came through very clearly. I don't know if I'm gonna say her name correctly, Deneen? Deneen, yeah. Robinson. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote I'm in my here. notes. Deneen's on the chat. I on wrote the in my notes that I want to marry her because <laughs> I loved her response. She said, I've been in waiting for a long time. I once struggled to find PR jobs. And so motivated by Shanali and her work, she embarked on a, on a career as a freelancer. She's invested in herself. She's carved out opportunities and she just landed her dream gig, which if you, I mean, t talk about taking the bull by the right. horns. I thought that was freaking amazing. Um, and then I also loved Victoria's, um, <clears throat> because it made me laugh. <laughs> Increased success would allow me to buy more coffee. Buying more coffee would mean I would be a little more creative on a Monday morning in a caffeine-induced virtuoso showdown. And I was just like, that's amazing. I mean, <laughs> and there's a picture of a coffee of a lot, yeah. which is yeah. amazing. So, and then of course I have to shout out to Amy and to Paula because they also are Spin Sucks community members. So yay, girls. Absolutely. Yay. So Janet, I'm going to um, talk a little bit about, about uh, you know, my, well, not, I'll start doing the reveal, but if you can type into the chat box, um, who stood out for you and why, um, I will tell you, like Ginny and Simona said, it was really, really hard because, you know, we didn't have a crap load of entries, but which I didn't expect, but um, the ones that we did get were all very thought out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from, from Paula putting on the Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse ears, ears and with her green pen, pen. <laughs> um, to Danielle's enthusiasm, to the selfie that I think it was Andrea who posted, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, to Robin's entry, to um, Heather, Heather Shin Thomas with a grumpy cat. Right. Uh, <laughs> <photo>. <laughs> that was so funny. That was so funny. It was like so much creativity and more than anything, I really, really appreciated everyone being so honest and open with, with their situations, you know, cause that's hard. And even <coughs> if you're part of a community, even if say, you know, some people know me, some people know others in the community, it's still hard because there's still 600, 700 other people and sometimes much, much larger numbers who you don't know and you're sharing bits of your soul. Um, and so I really appreciate that honesty and, and really, I feel very grateful for it. So now here's the big reveal. And I have to tell everyone that none of the other judges know. We don't know. We have, have no idea. Because they all wanted <laughs> to wait to do for the reveal. So here's what we did. There was one clear winner based on tallies, for, so we had four judges, the four of us, the three of us and Janet. Um, so one person got, was ranked number one by two of us. Um, so that person was number one, clearly. And then what we did was we ranked each person with points. And then based on how everyone ranked them, we did a tally, does that make sense? So basically when you person A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. 10, 9, 8, 7, yep. et cetera, and then depending on where they stood in our individual rankings, they were assigned that point total. And that's how we got to the final winner. Well, we knew who the final winner was, but we wanted to see who came in second and third. Now, second runner up is the person who made you laugh so hard, Ginny, and it's Victoria Cox. She had a great, awesome. great entry. I'm telling you, it was so hard to just give. It's like Simona asked, "Can I only rank one person first?" And I was like, "Yeah, you have I to know. rank only one yes. person first. So Victoria Cots came in, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Victoria Cots or Couch. I apologize in advance if I'm not. So she came in third. The second runner-up was is Heather Shin Thomas of Grumpy Cat <laughs> Meme fame. Grumpy cat. Which, awesome. uh, which was just, again, a really, really hilarious entry. And the winner of the Virtuoso in Waiting seat for life at no cost is Danielle ZH. 
<laughs> Yay! Yeah, that was so amazing. congrats, Danielle. Really I'm really cute. excited that I think you're here. Danielle, are you here? Uh, yes, you are. Danielle, if you are here, oh, you're calling in. <laughs> awesome. Oh, no, Danielle, call it again so that we can bring you up on the on the screen. Um, oh, and Andrea's here too. So Danielle, go ahead and call back in. But here's why I wanted to give you the names of um, the runners up as well. Because I wanted to give you something, um, I'm going to give you, we had, if you remember, we had a book giveaway as well. And the winner of the book giveaway for the SPR makeover contest that we held during the webinar is Amy West. So Amy, you're going to get, yay. Oh, yay. Yes. yay so Amy's going to get a fabulous uh, pack of these three books. Jay's Hug Your Haters, <laughs> Mark's Content Code, and Patrice's Becoming Ginger Rogers all three fabulous books and because i wanted to give the runners up something you guys will also get a gift pack of the books each so heather and victoria um you will need to send me your mailing addresses so that i can put your goodie bag in the mail for you i know it's not a seat to the course but hopefully it's better than than nothing so um with that the reveal is done <laughs> Thank you guys again, <laughs> Ginny, Janet, and Simona for giving of your time and energy to select the winner. Congrats, Danielle. Congrats all of the entrants because you really, like Emma said, you did a great job. And I hope you all have a great weekend and um, I will see you back in the group or somewhere else. Any last words, Ginny, Simona? Happy weekend and thank you so much Happy for weekend. including me. Oh, thank you so much. All right, everyone. Thank bye. You. Have a great Have a weekend. Good weekend. Bye, bye. Simona. Bye, Shanali.